أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وهو خير ناصر ومعين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد عجل فرجه قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم وقوله حق وهو أصدق الصادقين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا قتب عليكم الصيام كما قتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون في سائر سلوات السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته It's an honor for me to be here and I thank God for giving me this opportunity and you all tell us that to share some uh, reflection on this verse and how it's going to lead us in our life. As we are getting closer to the month of Ramadan, uh, we will connect this verse uh, with the topic which uh, I have selected for this month for, the, for you is the three top fundamental aspects of human relationship in the month of Ramadan. As a human being, uh, we have relationships and there are three basic fundamental types of relationship in which we live in this world. If we don't focus on those relationships, what will happen? That is very important for us to focus today. There are only three, yes, basic, fundamental are three and there are offshoots of that relationship. For example, let's say you wish to have a piece of land and you really work hard day and night to buy a piece of land where you want to build your own house okay uh, you are young you are in university you are working hard to get your degree and after degree you want to have a good job then you want to have your family so you are planning from now you are planning for your future and every day you are counting and you are developing yourself so that once you graduate, you get a job and then you look for a spouse, children, you need a house and let's say you are successful and you got a piece of land, you bought it yourself and then you started building on it also and you spend your 20 years, 15-20 years of your life for earning, making the house ready and when it's ready and you enter the house and you see the decoration and everything, you have made a beautiful house and a point comes you realize this is not my land. I have built this house in someone else's land. How will you feel at that time? You have earned so much money, you worked hard you did so many things to earn money to buy the piece of land. After getting that land, you started building the house and you made a beautiful house. After building the beautiful house, when you wanted to enter, you enter and you saw everything and then you realize, oh my God, this piece of land was not mine. It was someone else. I built the house on someone else's land. How will you feel at that time? So. This is where we need to reflect. The month of Ramadan is to reflect, are we building the house in our own land or not? Because this dunya is not our land. Our real land is Akhira. We have to build house over there. That's the real house for which we have come into this world. So this 
verse of Quran which talks about Ya yalladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba alaykum min qablikum la lakum tattaqun so you become god conscious if we become god conscious then we will always think of that house in jannah but our whole focus is this dunya so because of this month of ramazan god has given us one more opportunity to think and build our house over there so that is what i really need to think i'm not saying don't build a house here no you do build a house here buy the house live in the good house but focus that this is not the real house if you have ever been to safari you have been to a hotel and you have rented a room for a week for 3 days you you love that room very well decorated all the facilities but you know that you have to go and you don't feel too much about it you stay there and you move you never think that this room is my life you know that i am here for a week and i will go to another place same thing in this world so i have to be conscious i have to be alert that what i'm thinking right now is i am planning everything for this world is i am planning everything for here so if i may ask you what is your goal in life what is your objective of life what do you want in this life so if you have to think what is my objective in this world what do i want so when i start writing i want to have a good house i want to have a good family i want to have good money i want to have a car i want to be insured health insurance life insurance everything which will come into my thinking is all this good big good bank balance you know so again so i am all thinking about my life of this world so is this life is my real life this is not my real life so the question this question is wrong in a sense because we live in this world we are always told by the media by uh, educational institutions and other centers that you have to have a plan for this life and focus on that you have to be successful in this world all the motivational speakers of the world they say my individual goal my purpose of life i have to achieve my goal in life at any cost that's how we think so the question here is our goal of life is to live in this world if your goal in life is to live in this world forever then you can plan for this life that's good but if your goal is to leave this world then plan how to die we are not here to live we are here to die the goal is how you are going to die in this world not to live in this world you want to die like imam hussein or you want to die like yazid the choice is yours we are here to die we are not here to live so how you are going to die prepare for that once you start thinking like this your lifestyle will change your thinking will change your lifestyle will change your planning will change because now you are planning to die maybe you want to be you want to get shahada that's totally different so that is very important so will you plan to make your house here when you are planning to die you will not you you might make a house but the objective will not be that that i will have a very beautiful house everything set and all that so this is something we need to reflect that okay let's prepare that how do we want to get uh, shahada for example how do we want to leave this world and meet god over there that's the plan so as we go forward 
we say that in the month of Ramadan we fast. The objective is to fast. So there are three levels of fasting. As Imam Ali says, there are three levels of fasting. So the first level of fasting is an ordinary fasting, which everybody fasts. Then there is special and there is very special kind of fasting. So what Imam Ali says is, fasting of the heart, fasting of the tongue, and fasting of the stomach. So there are three types of fasting. Okay, fasting for the heart is better than fasting for the tongue, and fasting for the tongue is better than fasting for the stomach. Normally when we fast, we are fasting to eat. We are preparing the whole day, the food, the meal, and to drink all, all kind of sharbat, you know, on the table, and different variety of food, because we want to break our fast. Imam Ali is saying, this is the third level of fasting. But the higher level of fasting, the real level of fasting, is the fasting of your heart. That is real fasting. What is the fasting of the heart? The fasting of your heart is you don't allow any negative thinking, any bad thinking enter into your mind. If you can do that, that is the highest degree of fasting. Where you don't allow any negative thoughts, any bad thoughts entering into your mind, means into your heart. If you can do that, that means you have self-control. You have reached lalakum tattaqoon. You have reached the highest level of taqwa. You are not allowing anything to enter. Because the way you think, the way you feel. And the way you feel, the way you will behave. <coughs> so this kind of taqwa is required. So when we see the spiritual leaders, when we think of our prophets, when we think of our imams, why can't they commit sin? Why don't they do wrong? Let's not talk about, talk about Imam and Prophet. The spiritual leaders which exist in this world, like currently we had Ayatollah Bahajar, before him Imam Khomeini, and other leaders, they don't commit sins like that. They are strong, they are pure. Why? Because they don't allow thoughts to come in. They stop them there. Once you control your thoughts, you will become peaceful. You will become happy. You know, most of the problem in this, in this era, in this world, is of depression. People are depressed. After pandemic, people are more depressed. After COVID-19, people are depressed and they don't have hope in their life. They see darkness in future. They see future is very dark. We can't do anything. You ask them, why are you thinking like this? They'll say, I don't know. I don't know why I'm sad. I don't know why I am I'm depressed. I don't see anything, I don't see success in my life. Because you're allowing negative thinking to come into your heart. And heart is the place of God. Al-Qalbu Nurun. That is the place of God. If you allow negative things to come in, it will make you depressed, it will give you anxiety, it will give you tension. So we have to stop negative thinking so that we can think positively. If you will ask yourself right question, you will get right answers. If you will ask negative questions from yourself, you will get negative answers. Ask yourself anything negative you will get negative reply. But if you ask positive question, right question, you will get right answer. So it is very important that how we think. That is very, very important. One of the major problem in today's world is we are not thinking. We have become just followers, blind followers. Our mind doesn't work. But in this Ramadan, God wants us to think. God wants us to reflect. Because this heart 
which is God's place, it is full of noor. And the job of the mind is to think. If you don't ask questions, it means you're not understanding anything. And you don't want to understand. But when you ask questions, it means you want to understand something. You want to know something. That's very, very important. So, as Imam said, there are three levels. The first level is the level of your stomach, which every ordinary Muslim fast. They fast because they don't want to drink and eat because it is Ramadan. And we are waiting for iftar. The whole day, whatever we do, it, it doesn't matter. Our stomach is hungry and, our, and when we need water. So that is the desire of the body. If your body is hungry, they will need food. Right? If your stomach is empty, how will you fill this stomach? With food and water. So that is the desire of the body. Body needs it. But what about your tongue? It needs to be controlled. Controlled by not talking, backbiting, not talking negative, not talking anything wrong. The fasting of your tongue is you don't allow your tongue to do bad things. That is, that is your moral behavior. Okay? So that tongue also needs, so ears also needs, eyes also need. Now it comes to your heart. So your heart, the purity of your heart also needs fasting. It also needs something. As your stomach becomes hungry, you need food. When you fast from your heart, it needs noor. It needs guidance. That's why Quran recitation is very important in the month of Ramadan. And reflecting upon it is very important because it energizes you. Then you get peace of mind. Otherwise you cannot. So this is the, the, the theme which we have to focus and work upon that in this month of Ramadan, I have to fast at three levels. Stomach level and my body organ level and my heart level. Then I will reach to a certain level where I can say, yes, I have reached certain level in the month of Ramadan. The Quran recitation with reflection. Th that's very important. So I am going to now. I am going to my topic, which, which I think I should discuss here. That there are three types of fundamental relationship which we want to connect with the month of Ramadan. First is my relationship with myself. My relationship with myself. So how is your relationship with yourself? This is the first question I need to ask myself. Maybe your relationship is good to your friend. Your relationship may be good to your spouse. Maybe your relationship good to your boss. Right? And you make your wife happy, you make your child happy, you make your boss happy. You make everyone happy. But what about yourself? Are you happy? Are you satisfied? So how is your relationship with yourself? This is the first question which we need to think and answer. If I am confused about that, if I am not satisfied about my answer, then I really need to work on myself. So the first thing which we need to understand is my relationship with myself is based on how I purify myself. Purification of my soul is my first relationship with myself. قَدْ أَفْلَهَا مَنْ زَكَّهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ This is the first relationship and the most important relationship which one can have with oneself. If we don't have that relationship with ourselves, what will happen? Can anyone of you tell me? If I don't purify myself, what will happen? Because God has said that he who purifies, it will prosper. Will, 
will develop, will get falah, right? And he who, he who suppresses it will ruin his life. If I don't purify, purify myself, what will happen to me? What kind of a personality I will become? That's the question. Because this is the first and the most important relationship which I can have with myself, which is because I am very important to for myself. I love myself. I want to be good. I want people to love me. And I want to do good. And I want people to respect me. I want people to listen to me. And I want to do the same. But it is not happening. Sometimes I fight. Sometimes I am, I am angry. Sometimes uh, I think I am jealous. So many things happen to me within myself. So why? Because we are not purified. Once we start doing purification, then we will be at ease. You know one of the problems which we face in our family life, in our working place where we work, our issues are because of not being purified. We get into competition. We compete with each other negatively. We want to control each other with power. Our language is of authoritative language. We think, we, think we, we have the whole power in our hand. So we struggle for power. We struggle to rule, control because of no purification. If you have purification, you will not fight. There is no need to fight. You will you will sit and you will talk, you will discuss, you will solve. Your mind will be like problem solving, not creating problem. You will know everything is in God's hand. You know, God will give you peace of mind and peace of heart. There will be less issues. Then you will, God will give you sukoon. In your qalb, God will enter sukoon. That sukoon will not frustrate you easily. When you get frustrated, when you get tense, when you get angry, is because the soul is not pure. You have to remove that impurity from your soul so that you can be at ease. The more God is in us, the more we are calm, the more we are composed. If you have met spiritual people, you don't see them excited, you don't see them angry. They are calm, composed, you talk to them, they will reply to you. And we are showing our reactions. They don't, because they know their state. It's very, very important for us to reflect upon it. What is the other relationship which I have with myself? So first relationship is self-purification. My relationship with myself is of self-purification. What is the second relationship of myself with, with me? And which is very, very fundamental, which is very, very important. That is to be truthful. Okay? To speak the truth. As Quran says, Ya ayyulladheena amanu ittaqulla wa qulu qawlan sadida. If we start speaking truth, we will be very powerful people. If those people who speak the truth, when it's time to say the truth, they speak the truth, they are leaders. Good leaders are the people who speak always truth. Weak people cannot become leaders because they don't speak the truth, they speak lies. So now I have to ask myself how much I am honest and I speak truth always. Why we don't speak truth? Because we have fear. Why we have fear? Because we have no fear of God. Our souls are not pure. Once your soul is pure, you will speak the truth. You have no fear. What will you lose? When you speak lies, you have a fear that I will lose something or something will be taken away from me. That's why we lie. But when you are pure, you don't lie and you're not going to lose anything because you know God is going to give you. 
he gave me before he will give me again so why should i lie so when you speak the truth you become powerful so much powerful that people cannot imagine that this young boy young man is so powerful why because he knows the power of the truth it gives you confidence it builds confidence in you when you start speaking truth always it builds more yaqeen in you and you from inside you get energized it increases your iman so you don't fear you don't fear of any anything la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun that's why we see our prophet imams our spiritual leaders our maraja what do they do what is atullah khamenei saying nowadays to america to russia to china no fear why because they speak the truth your the truth is from god it is the attribute of god that's why it's powerful a small husna if you study a small husna it is all reflection of god's attributes so god's attribute is pure powerful so the more you attract those attributes in you the more you are powerful being so this is the time of in the month of ramadan as much as you recall a small husna and reflect upon it and act upon it you will become powerful so if you think you are becoming powerful what can you do if you become the president of tanzania what will you do can you imagine that you can become the president of tanzania i can see in your eyes so this thought process which is telling you you cannot become who's telling you this and who's who's saying to you that you can become if god says i am with you you can become that is what we are talking about if you are thinking i cannot become the president president of tanzania then you are not purified your mind is still not clear you don't believe in yourself so you have to believe in yourself you have to have belief in your in, in the god then you can become something you want to become but this negative thinking will not allow you unless you control your thoughts once you control your thoughts you can become what you want to you can achieve what you want because that is god's promise we have to follow what god says then god will give us what we want the other thing which is expected from us the other thing which is expected from us is our relationship with ourselves so we mention only two things here i will go and i will mention other things my relationship with myself of being purification the other thing is of truthfulness and the third thing is of humility being humble being down to earth being kind that's why we are called human beings if we are not kind if we are not humble if we are not down to earth we are not human beings then we are wild animals we will destroy everything we finish everything we kill each other because we are human beings we are humble and we are kind that is the relationship which i should have with my self so i have to assess myself do i have such a relationship with myself or not now my relationship with my god with my lord i'm just going quickly on this because there is a lot of things to to share now what is your relationship with god if i have if i ask you a question what is your relationship with god god has created us right and he wants us to connect to him in how how do he wants us to connect to him
So God says that in, in Quran, in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 41, He says, وَثْقُرْ رَبَّكَ كَثِيرًا وَسَبَّهِ بِالْأَشِيَّةِ وَالْبِالْأَشِيَّةِ وَالْإِبْقَارِ So remember God, remember your Lord, extol His glory by night and day. So if we remember God day and night, then our connection will God will be there. So the month of Ramadan is a month to connect to God. Why do we need to connect to God? Have you ever seen the compass? The, the compass which shows you direction. <coughs> map. If you want to see a map, there is a compass. Uh, which has direction, which has needle in it. It goes like this. When it finds the North Pole, it stops there. When you have tension, when you have frustration, when you have difficulties in life, our needle is moving here and there. It is not settling. But once you connect with God, that needle settles. Calm, focus and settle. If you have challenges, difficulties in life and you're not coming out of it, that means you're not connected to God. Once you connect to the God, then you will get settled. So this is very important for us to understand that if I want peace of mind, peace in life, I, my, my life is going through different turmoils, I have to connect to God. I am not aligned with God. Once you align with God, remember God, then there will be peace, there will be harmony in our life. And this is what God wants us in the month of Ramadan. That is what is, that is, what is missing. So what we do in Ramadan is, after iftari, we go to play. We go to play football. We go to play other games. We say, okay, ibadat done, let's have fun. So you have 11 months to have fun, but this is another month. This whole environment here is to energize us. So every, every moment is very, very important in this month. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَتْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرَ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرَ اللَّهِ تَتْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبُ So we want our hearts to be pure by the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not only dhikr with tongue, dhikr with intellect, dhikr with qalb. So God has blessed us with coming month, take the best out of it. If we know that, if we think about it and we work on it, then you can get what you want. Because it is God's promise, He will give you what you want. So what is that thing we, we should ask from God? That is again, you have to, you have to think that what do I want from God? If God says, I will give you three things, in the month of Ramadan, your first three things, whatever you want, I will give you. What will you ask? Is it material things? What it is? Whatever first thing you can think of is your value in life. This is what you value in life. Whether you think I am a Muslim, I am a woman, I am not materialistic, I am a spiritual, all these things keep it on one side. Whatever you are thinking right now, the first three things I will ask from God, that is your life. That is your value. Those are those three things are you val are your values in life. This is what you value. Rest of the thing is just information. That is how we assess ourselves. So the next thing is, so two things I would like to explain here. One, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and istighfar and tawbah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Connect yourself with God through tawbah, through istighfar. 
this is two way relationship with god so god will forgive us and and god loves us he wants us to come closer to him so through zikr and through istighfar we build that bond we build that connection and relationship the third thing is relationship with others my relationship human relationship with god one with myself two and three is with others other creation of god so there are three top relationships my relationship with myself because i am amana of god my ruh is amana of god to me i have to return it back to god like when you marry your wife is amana to you you are amana of god to her your children are amana of god to you and you have you are answerable for that same thing your relationship with yourself your relationship with god and your relationship with the creation of god which can be human beings plants animals nature whatever so we have to work on these things we have to think then we become a better or a perfect human being we fulfill and we build strong bond and relationship then we will become successful so i don't have time to go into detail but i just want you to reflect and work upon it how is your relationship with all three dimensions how is your relationship with your family with your friends with your colleagues with the place you work how do they define you what will they talk and tell you or tell you about yourself so let's suppose let's suppose as i mentioned that we have to plan how to die so let's suppose this is a dead body of me if i am dead here and we are all you are all here standing okay and my family comes and says that my father was like this my child talking about me because i'm dead what they will talk about me my wife my in-laws what they will talk about me the place i work what they will talk about me what my friends are going to talk about me what my teachers my mentors are going to talk about me last thing what if imam comes what imam is going to talk about me so if i get one more chance and i come back what are the first three things i'm going to do because i know i'm i'm not get another chance so this ramadan is like that you have seen that imam has come and he is talking about you something and he has given you one more chance to get through this month of ramadan and uplift yourself so that when you meet again imam and god they are proud of you they are proud of me myself assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh we say salawat